Following Nvidia's release of the RTX 4060 series to join the rest of the Ada Lovelace lineup, I think it's safe to say Nvidia has established their worst generation of graphics cards they've delivered to consumers. The goal is open for AMD to swoop in and deliver price to performance that gamers were expecting, but instead it seems like they were more interested in outdoing Nvidia on who can create the most underwhelming family of GPUs. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. So now that Nvidia has essentially shown us their entire hand when it comes to the RTX 40 series, it seems like AMD is finally gearing up to release their mid-range offerings to compete against cards like the RTX 4060 Ti and the RTX 4070. Now, I said Nvidia's entire hand was shown, but they can still release some new additions to the lineup if they want. Circling back to this old die size chart that shows relative sizes of GPUs when compared to the full die of that specific generation, Nvidia can easily release an RTX 4080 Ti if they want, and they can also release the full 80102 GPU as the RTX 4090 Ti. However, I just don't see Nvidia doing this, or at least not anytime in the near future. Maybe something might come in the second quarter of 2024, but as it stands right now, and as much as it pains me to say this, Nvidia is just chilling right now, and they're basically on cruise control. They just don't have that need to release a new GPU or drop prices. Especially not because their only other viable competitor in the market isn't interested in actually competing. I know I talked about Intel recently in a video, but we just don't have much concrete info on on when it comes to Battle Mage, when it will be releasing, performance targets, and pricing information. They're also just too new. I know they've made massive strides with their drivers, but they still have a ways to go. When it comes to AMD, they've put themselves in this weird spot because they wanted to release a new series, but they also wanted to avoid being cannibalized by last gen parts, but that was inevitable given the prices they were charging and the level of hardware you were getting. It's obvious when you think about it that they upsold the true RX 7800 XT as the RX 7900 XTX only because Nvidia was like, we're charging $1200 for our RTX 4080 and you guys should totally join us, hence the $1000 4080 quote unquote competitor. Last generation, the RTX 3080 had an MSRP of $699, Nvidia bumped up the MSRP by $70. 2% and coincidentally AMD decides we're also going to bump up our MSRP by around 54% this time and for those who might say where's that increase coming from the RX 6900 XT was 999 which means AMD didn't increase the price at all except the 6900 XT was the 3090 competitor and this time around AMD has no 4090 competitor. So since they've disguised the true RX 7800 XT as a higher tier GPU, when they actually release an RX 7800 XT or 7800 or the RX 7700, they're not going to be significantly faster than their previous gen counterparts, which is a shame. When I look at a new generation, I'm expecting at least an average of 50% improvement gen on gen minimum for that same price. You can't offer that same performance jump, but then also bump up the price by 50% more or 70% more. And on the other hand, if you offer a 10 to 20% jump for the same price, then that's also a fail in my books. Since we're on the topic of performance, I wanted to take a look at some leaked benchmarks for what are allegedly the RX 7800 and RX 7700. I find it interesting that these rumors suggest AMD is going to be releasing non-XT variants first, but we did have them release a 7600 non-XT not too long ago, so I wouldn't doubt it. Now these benchmarks were posted to Twitter by a user named Alda Watts. They're results from the 3 mark times by benchmark. The results come from the RX 7700, which attained a GPU score of 15,568 and the second result is for the RX 7800 that GPU scores 18,957. Harukaze on Twitter ended up putting these results in a chart with the rest of the other current gen and last gen GPUs so we can compare. I'm not sure where exactly he's sourcing the results for the other GPUs but we can see that he has the RX 6800 XT at 18,711 and the average GPU score from 3 d Mark's database puts it at 19,272. Though they're fairly close and what we're looking for is just a ballpark as results will vary from system to system depending on the model, power limits, overclocks, and etc. Looking at these results and if we're to use his numbers we can see that the RX 7800 is only going to be a mere 16% faster than the RX 6800 and when compared to the RX 
6800 XT, performance is going to be roughly the same. It'll probably win some and lose some when we translate this performance to games. As for the RX 7700, we can see it loses to the last gen RX 6800, which keep in mind goes for around $400 to $450 these days, or lower if you buy open box or used. Also, Harukaze doesn't have the RX 6700 XT here, but 3DMark's database lists its average GPU score at 12,809, which means we're looking at a performance gain of around 22%, which I wouldn't call terrible, but also nothing to write home about. Though compared to Nvidia's quote-unquote mid-range offerings, we can see that the RX 7700 is faster than the RTX 4060 Ti, and the RX 7800 is faster than the RTX 4070. Now, at the end of the day, what'll make or break these products is the pricing. People right now aren't too happy with Nvidia's pricing, as what you're getting for these increased prices is less hardware than what that segment is accustomed to getting. AMD has a good opportunity to swoop in and clean up this mess that Nvidia has made, and give gamers what they actually want. There were some leaks that indicate how these GPUs may cost once they hit store shelves, but before we look at that, I wanted to quickly go over some pricing for GPUs you can buy right now, which offer that level of performance we just talked about. For around $530, you can buy brand new RX 6800 XTs, and on the used market, they seem to go around for $450 to $500. It seems like prices for these GPUs are slightly creeping up from where they were a couple months ago. Looks like everyone has realized it's better to get the old stuff while it's cheap rather than the new overpriced price stuff that's barely faster if at all. RX 6800's brand new as mentioned go for around $450 and hey you do get Starfield so if you were planning on getting that game anyways you can think of it as another discount. Interestingly RTX 3080's on the used market seem to be going for cheaper than what the average RX 6800 XT is going for. I've seen listings for around $400 some even lower than that and if you were going to be pulling at 1080p and 1440p not a bad option it still has 10 gigabytes of VRAM and a very wide 320-bit bus, which would come in faster than this upcoming RX 7800. Those are the options that are available for you today if you want that level of performance or, like I said, a little bit higher. The question then is, should you even wait for these upcoming mid-range RX 7000 GPUs? Well, according to the leaked pricing, probably not. This info comes from all the watts as well, and they're stating that the RX 7800 will launch at 549 USD, and the RX 7700 will launch at 449 USD. At these prices, these cards don't move the needle at all, and I could definitely see why some may even be calling these cards DOA at those prices. Since we just saw listings for GPUs that already offer more performance than what these cards are going to be offering at lower prices. It's clear that AMD is using Nvidia's strategy here and are disguising lower tiered cards with higher tier names just so they can sell them at higher prices, which therefore means better profit margins. If these cards were both $100 cheaper and were called the RX 7700 XT, and RX 7600 XT respectively, then I think it would have made them a lot more appealing, not mind-blowing, but decent, and would still make them look a lot better than what Nvidia has to offer. If AMD came out and said, we're offering this RX 7600 XT, which is around 15-20% to faster than the RTX 4060 Ti, we're offering you more VRAM too, and it's also cheaper by about $50, they would instantly become the favorites in that segment. However, because they bumped up all the tiers like Nvidia did, they've essentially shot themselves in the foot now where people don't have any incentive to buy the new offerings over the old ones when there's no dramatic performance advancements, and in some cases, you're looking at downgrades. And look, I'm not defending Nvidia over this, but at least they had this marketable gimmick called DLSS 3. And I personally know some people who do love using it, and it makes a difference for them. I've also personally used it in some single player games and it's helped. But what does AMD even have? AV1 encoding? A little bit better ray tracing performance, which most of you aren't even going to be taking advantage of anyways. In regards to a release date, over at John Petty, they mentioned that AMD will be announcing these two graphics cards during Gamescom 2023, which will take place in late August, which points to a release sometime in September. I think the reason why they chose this date is because by then, stock for most of the RX 6000 series should be gone, and as supply starts to run out, prices aren't going to really come down either, and we've seen them start to creep back up a bit because people are choosing to just buy them instead. This is why I find it comical when I make a video pertaining to Nvidia, and I see people commenting saying we need to support AMD and you should buy an AMD GPU because they're not as bad. Well, they're doing the exact same thing as what Nvidia have been doing, though what makes it worse for AMD is that they don't have nearly as much market share and mind share as them, so I just don't get it. Why are they trying to run their brand into the ground? 
it's just beyond me. Anyways, guys, that'll do it for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.